boom, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Man, I got a show for you guys today. All right, look, death is a natural part of life. And what happens after you pass away? Well, you get to decide a couple options. Sure, we can bury you. We could turn you into a tree or there's a whole other option you didn't even know about. And no, it is not cremation. So let's get this one on the road. Here we go. Shut up, Shut up and, and sit down. down. Look, a business can give you everything you want in life. Prestige, wealth, freedom. It can also take everything away from you. This show is for those who are willing to take that risk. These are the real life stories of entrepreneurs. But before we start, I have one small favor to ask. Please leave a comment. It can be advice, critiques, tips, feedback, or share this with someone because your engagement is the most valuable and most powerful form of social currency. So thank you, and welcome to another episode of Business Boss! Attention entrepreneurs and environmentally conscious individuals. Have you ever wondered if there's a better way to honor your loved one's memory than through the traditional flame-based cremation? Are you looking for a more gentle, sustainable, eco-friendly option. Today we have an expert joining us um, to share their knowledge and experience with aquamation, a process that uses water instead of fire for cremation. They'll share the benefits of this unique approach, how it works, and answer some common questions about the process. So buckle up and get ready to learn. Now let's welcome to the show, John Snyder. <laughs> All right, John, now the party can start. Okay, yes, yes, it's death. It's not the funnest thing to talk about, but unfortunately, that's kind of how we win the game of life. Like, you can't escape it. It's what happens. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into aquamation, man? Like, well, how did that even come about? Well, first of all, you're f you're from San Diego, right? Did I read that correctly? Yes, sir. Okay, so I grew up in La Mesa, which is out by San Diego State. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, truthfully, I don't think we're a big sports fan, uh, you know, city because there's so much to do. Come on. You can go to the beach. You go to the mountains. Um, I live in Orange County now. I mean, where else can you go surfing in the morning and skiing in the afternoon? You we're Fairweather um, fans, my friend. Fairweather fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a huge sports fan because I just love being outdoors. You know, let's go outside. And, you know, of course, when I grew up, you'd go outside and play baseball and run around with the kids and you know, and whatever. And I never got into unleaded cars and, and things like that and started being concerned about the environment. But, you know, the in all truthfulness, COVID really brought this to my attention. Um, the truth is, I don't know if you know anybody or had to deal with, you know, death during COVID or even recently, but the price of burial is freaking insane, oh, you yeah. know, in any major city. And let's face it, from Magic Mountain all the way down to the border below you guys, it would be solid if it wasn't for Camp Pendleton. Um, and, it, and land is just ex insanely expensive. You know, so burial can be anywhere from, you know, ten to $50,000. So yeah. that's not really feasible, economical, or sustainable. And it's not all that great for the environment with all the stuff that actually leaks out of there anyway. And then secondly, so a lot of people go to cremation. It's much more affordable. And it's just like, it's just, you know, it's what we do. And that wasn't really accepted, you know, until about, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Although some religions have been doing it for, you know, centuries. And, uh, and during COVID, um, I'm what's called a funeral escort. So those guys on motorcycles that take a procession down the, um, you know, from the church to the cemetery. And, uh, you know, my, my clients are mortuaries. And I was talking to them, man, they were just slammed. And it was just crazy. and you know, you'd see pictures behind the, the hospitals of these big refrigerated trailers. But that was the end of the story. It's mm. like, uh, what happened after that? And I got to see firsthand just how crazy um, that really was. Um, up, here, up here, Rose Hills is, I think, the biggest cemetery in the nation, not quite the world. They had like 45 trailers or something like that. And Whoa. they can hold, I think, over 500 bodies in their normal storage. So... They just kept taking and they just kept adding trailers. Um, and so, you know, people, I was like, well, what can we do to solve this problem? I've always kind of been a problem solver. It's like, okay, is there an answer here? And I thought about getting into cremation and I looked into it and the AQMD and all the other regulations that are um, hindering that. Uh, it was just, you know, it's impossible to do. And then I started realizing, you know, how, how bad that actually is for the environment. So, 
a friend of mine, same uh, same person I was kind of talking to, introduced me to Aquamation, just like I'm talking to you. And I'm like, what? You know, what the heck is this? And you're just using this, which is water cremation. It's called alkaline hydrolysis is the technical term for it. So you're taking water, you get it up to over 300 degrees. Um, the, the thing looks like, like a giant torpedo tube. I mean, you literally close the hatch, you spin the dial, you know, you close it just like you would a torpedo tube. So it gets up to high pressure. Um, with the water, you add alkaline, which is alkali, which is lye basically, and you dissolve. Um, I hate to say, it, but you know, the fleshy part, you know, of the body. Now, in a regular cremation, you end up with that urn of material when you're done. All that really is is just the bones crushed um, and put into an urn. Now, it's called ash because it's been through a fire. But in this case, it hasn't been burnt. So you're going to get getting 20% more material. But it's a bright white, like a piece of paper you'd be writing on or something. And it's more like a um, powdered sugar is, uh, is more the consistency. Because once again, it's not really an ash. But a lot of the bureaucracy and different things call it, refer to it as ash because people can re relate to that better. But anyway, you get 20% more in that urn. So you do whatever you want with that urn, you know. If you have five siblings, you can divide it up between them. If you want to uh, spread it over the desert or the ocean or whatever that looks like, um, that can be done. So the thing is, you use 90% less energy to get that, to get 20% more material, and there's no harmful fumes or anything going into the air in the process. So the only energy you're expending is heating up the water, and depending on whether you use natural gas or you use electricity, um, to do that. That's really the only energy that you're using to, um, for the process. That's very interesting. So it's almost like, uh, it, like cremation. The process is very similar. We're getting rid of our fleshy material, essentially left over with the bones. Um, but it comes out a nice, a nice powdery white, which is a little bit different. Uh, uh my brother was cremated and, uh, I remember getting his ashes and they were like that grayish material because I'm assuming it's the black part of the ash mixed in with the bone, right? Yeah, I mean, you go um, to the beach and you have a bonfire, you end up with all that ash at, you know, at the bottom. It's the same same material, basically. So same yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, what are, what are some of the most common like misconceptions people have? They hear about aquamation. Obviously, this is, we're not talking about aquaman. We're talking about aquamation here. What, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have when they hear about this process and how do you address them? Well, I think the people, uh, certain, first of all, it, Governor Brown signed this into law the second time, just before he ended his, his governorship the second time around. So this is back in, in 2017, 2018 timeframe. Well, it took us until 2021 for the funeral bureau to even figure out how they were going to regulate this. And the problem is only in California, they require it to go down the drain. And in any other state, Colorado, it's real popular. You take this, you can water a garden with it. Um, now, some people would be a little bit weird about growing food that you're going to eat. But if you grew the food for, say, you know, growing the corn to feed the cows, you know, the food the, of, of what we're eating, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but the real thing is that there's no RNA. There's no DNA. Um, it's a sterile water when you're done with it. And so all the, I, I'm having a huge, huge problem with all the bureaucracy. Um, I've had my machine on order for over a year now. And finding a place to put it in California is extremely difficult. Um, hmm. I'm probably going to end up putting it, I'm working forward uh, towards that right now, putting it in Nevada. Um, but I can take um, cases now. If someone has a loved one that wants to, you know, and, and you really, you know, want to do this, um, we can help you out right now. Um, I just can't process it uh, physically myself because of that very same reason. And in Orange County, they don't say it this way, but basically we're doing toilet to tap. Anything that goes down the drain gets processed. So, you know, obviously, you know, can we say poop and whatever else going down the drain, but people pouring their drugs down, that doesn't even really get filtered out. So anyway, that gets, um, goes through the filtering system, pumped back into the groundwater, and then eventually pumped into your house or, you know, into your faucet. And yet what I'm doing is more sterile than that, but it's the ooh factor. And that's what yeah. we've got to get past is like, oh, my God, grandma's going down the drain. I can't drink water anymore. And that's just not the case. 
Man, I always had a joke. I found out that you can, you they can turn you into a tree. They put you like in this dirt sack on the tree. I was like, well, turn me into an orange tree, so at least I'll be like fruitful and multiply, right? <laughs> or multiply, right? Yeah. I just thought that would work, and you know, and then and then I told my wife that way anybody who I pissed off in life they can just eat me, right? Like that's it, <laughs> go down the drain. <laughs> and now when you say eat me, they really can, yeah. <laughs> right, literally, literally. All right, well, let's talk about cost then. Um, obviously, we said, you know, having a traditional funeral, just getting the plot of land, the, every, the whole process can be very, very expensive. Right. Uh, I, was, I was telling you before the show, I've been in the, funeral, in the uh, life insurance space, and I always recommend people get at least something like $40,000, $50,000 in, in, a, in a life policy, even if it's just a term life policy, just in case you pass away to, to pay for the actual process. Uh, then we have cremation. It's a little bit more inexpensive. How does that relate to aquamation? Like, what are the what's the what's the ceremony like? What's the process like? And cost benefits? Well, I, I think your point is very valid because look how many GoFundMe pages were created during COVID because a lot of people that were even in their 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, were not anticipating dying soon and didn't have the life insurance, you know, or whatever in place, and. You know, a, a burial, like we say, I mean, a coffin alone can cost as much as doing cremation uh, and this being water cremation. So cremation can go from, I actually just read an article recently where it's averaging about $6,000. And I think that's nationwide. Um, you're looking at, um, I'm charging like $4,500 uh, for, for water cremation. And so you get the urn of material at the end. Now, if you want a nicer urn, you want to do a ceremony, uh, you know, a memorial service. A lot of people do that. You have the urn sitting there, you know, with some flowers, um, that kind of thing. All those same things can apply. Um, the other thing some people do, this doesn't happen very often, but you can do an actual viewing, you know, of the body or have the casket there at least, and then take it to um, the facility. Like cremation does that fairly uh, occasionally. I wouldn't say it happens very often. Those kinds of things could still be done, but if you want to do a viewing, an actual viewing of it, then the body has to be embalmed, and and that's kind of a whole nother um, animal and process. But let, let me ask you something real quick. So you can you can have a, a viewing before you do cremation. So do you like rent the coffin? Like obviously exactly. you're not going to use it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bought this coffin and I used it for my uh, my dad's uh, funeral, and now I've got it in the corner. And I got vases in it, you know. Stuff. I guess you could do that too, but that's a pretty expensive, uh, you know, vase uh, or uh, water <laughs> flower unless, holder kind of thing. Unless you're a vampire, then I guess you can use it as a bed, right? It's about the size of a twin size bed. <laughs> well, you know, if they, if your kids aren't going to sleep well at night, there's another solution, I guess. <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, you mentioned some of the environmental benefits, and I kind of wanted to go back to the uh, the regulation process that you have. So right now, you're able to do it in other states. You have other places where you can do it. Um, what's it looking like as far as getting the process in place? Like, are, are there major hurdles that that you're going through, or is like, is it the like a state or or a city level, or is it just the physical location, like the uh, I don't know, the, the, the mortuary itself just doesn't uh, use, won't allow it. Um, I think mortuaries <clears throat> are certainly more uh, aware of it and open to it, but they're usually pretty small. They don't really have the room to put in. I mean, I need like a 20 by 20 foot space uh, to put this machine in. I need room for storage. They may have storage already. They may not. Um, you know, the state has kind of said, all right, you can do this and now work it out with your local municipality on how to do it. And so you go to them and they're like, first of all, if they've heard of it, um, they're kind of like, what? And then wait a minute, you want to do that in my city? Um, you know, so that, that's a big challenge. Um, and some cities, Orange County actually has it written in their code, partly because they already did this with pet aquamation several years ago, back in 2017, I think it was, um, pet aquamation started going, and that's legal in all 50 states. Uh, humans is legal in about 25, so about half the states have this. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, the human composting, you know, is another option. And that's in about five states um, currently. So it, it's it, the state's pretty like, OK, you can do this, but it's all the levels below that as it trickles down. Um, that can be a challenge. I have a couple of places that would be hot to put it, but I can tell you I've tried to lease space. And as soon as you tell them you're putting dead bodies in there, um, yeah, that, that becomes a Led Zeppelin really quickly. 
Yeah, I'd imagine the finding the, some of those commercial spots will be a little bit difficult. But at the same time, I mean, this is part again. It's part of the process of what happens. There's there's places all over that are that are mortuaries or places that work with coffins, and there are places that work with tombstones. I gotta imagine there's still uh, commercial places that will allow stuff like that, especially when you're maybe in like a medical facility, right? Is there anything? Uh, any way that you'd be entering something like that, maybe a clinic as, as part of a, maybe a, a ward there or something like that? Uh, you know, there are places that are using um, kind of like say strip malls or, or that kind of a facility. What I really need is a place that has a roll up door. You know, ideally mm-hmm. you can drive a van in, roll up the door, uh, pull it in, unload. Um, you really don't want to have people seeing, okay, I'm going to roll this through the courtyard <laughs> and take it into my front door. You know, it, it's, you got to be really, um, you know, careful in, in, in how, how it looks, you know, everything's about how we look actually. Um, and so you want kind of an industrial space and some, in some cases you end up with maybe light manufacturing kinds of areas, but you also want something that's presentable if, um, you know, people want to come. Now, predominantly, I would probably be working with, you know, mortuaries and uh, people like that who are used to, I was like, yeah, they don't care what, what it looks like. But the truth is some people in regular cremation want to see the body being inserted into the cremation chamber, the retort. And and that can be done here too. So you kind of need to think through those those processes and and have it more... Uh, user friendly, I guess we could say. Yeah, people are looking for that closure, and everybody mourns differently. Everybody has their way of of dealing with death, and and yeah, I, I didn't even think of that. I I personally wouldn't want to see the body being burned, but I mean, I watch movies all the time. Maybe you watch Game of Thrones. Somebody dies in Game of Thrones, and they put them on an altar of fire, and like everybody watches. That's part of the ceremony. It's part of the closure process. Look yeah, but it's a hundred yards out there. <laughs> the That's water. very true. Very true. <laughs> I talked to people that you know. Uh, oh, my mom said I had to watch it, and it was like, and he starts describing the, you know, the the flaming process, and I don't. I'm not even going to say that, you know, out loud here because uh, I don't want to gross people out. But uh, you know, some people are in, are into that, you know, and also religious beliefs. That's a huge deal, you know. Um, Say like like talking Games of Thrones or some of the older cultures, that was just the way it was. You know, you you like you say you you light this thing on fire and you you push them out in the water. But like the Jews, okay, they have the Holocaust, you know, and they're not really excited about cremation, fire cremation, and being burned. So there's a lot of groups that a lot of people that just like, okay, you're not in the body anymore. What happens to it? You know, you're not going to feel that. But they're still kind of freaked out by the whole process. And that's where, uh, you know, aquamation, you know, comes in. Uh, and also it's way cleaner. That's the way, this is the way we got rid of mad cow, um, Ebola, any major disease. You're going to burn that and then have all that smoke and toxin and disease go up in the air. No, mm-hmm. this way it's, it's um, thoroughly cleaned. And, you know, you're getting up over 300 degrees. You boil the, the crap out of anything that was possibly living. So there's no chance of, of that. Um, not that there's a whole lot of uh, disease still living in a corpse, but, you know, that those were some serious deals, just like COVID was a serious deal. Um, and people like, oh, do I, do I want to touch this? And if we're burning that and that's all going up into the sky, um, how is that impacting us? Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, in different religious factors, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, Jews don't want to be cremated for obvious reasons. Um, are you getting any pushback or acceptance from from any of the religious sectors out there? Personally, um, I'm not. Uh, I'm just hearing that you know, the Jews are, are more open to it. Um, and they've been going the cremation route. Um, the... Catholic Church just allowed cremation, I think it's in the last five to 10 years. Um, so since they're already doing, you know, fire cremation, um, water cremation, I think, is kind of a natural transition for them. Um, but, you know, each group, you kind of have to just be sensitive. And and even with uh, the Jewish population, 
you know, when you, you realize just how incredibly expensive um, a traditional burial is, they're kind of like, well, I'm not really excited about this cremation, but, you know, but tell me about it. And so you talk to the funeral directors and that's really kind of the bottom line. You know, once again, the GoFundMe pages and all these other things for people that didn't um, already have some sort of life insurance or some sort of plan already in place. Um, it's it's a lot of it's a chunk of money. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, the inexpensive route, the ability to have take the urn with you, have the memorial. I mean, my father in law always jokes. He says when he passes away. He wants to preserve his eyeballs and put them on the urn because he wants to get cremated. And then he wants that cremate that, that urn sitting on the uh, on the shelf there so he can watch what's going on in the house. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, a viable thing there. But he's like, that way I can keep an eye on you after I'm gone. <laughs> And you're going to keep those, those – oh, I, I don't even want to picture how ugly that would get after a while. I mean, you definitely have to embalm that or something. I don't know how you would keep that possibly intact. Oh, for sure, for sure. What happened to traditional haunting? Can't we just go that route? <laughs> All right, let me ask you this, man. The the aquamation industry you mentioned has already started with the animals, right? So people want to want to have respect for their animals, and they right. choose not to right. bury them, not to cremate them. They an aquamation already worked there. Um, so how's the industry been growing or evolved over the recent years, and how, how do you see it like going on in the future as an end of life option? Well, I think it's becoming more and more um, accepted. But really, the big question is just what I'm doing right now, just trying to get the word out because people like yourself, it's like, you know, I've done cremation, I've done this, but aquamation, what is that? And that's an option. Um, it's education. You know, so many people don't even have a clue what, uh, what I'm talking about or what we're talking about. And, and that's really the biggest, the biggest challenge. And that's why I'm really starting to hit these podcasts, um, and other ways of getting uh, the word out there. Cause this is the digital way to do things. So if, if someone is interested, like you, you're maybe interested yourself in aquamation as an option for you, or maybe you have a loved one and you're like, Hey, this is my, that might be something. Um, what advice do you have for them? Yeah. Go to my website, um, or my Facebook page. My Facebook page has a ton of uh, videos on it, starting with, uh, the Mayo Clinic. Uh, one of the guys from there. Um, also UCLA has been doing this for, for 15 years, I think. So when they're done with a cadaver, they, they acclimate them instead of cremating them. Um, so once again, it's, it's not, um, like they say, there's nothing new under the sun. It's just the, it's just the technology. Uh, but all those, either go to my website and you've got my pricing. Um, if you want to book it, if you want to do something in the future, um, you know, I've got the same company set up that the, the funerals, funeral companies do and the money would just go directly to them and then that becomes an annuity or life insurance kind of thing it just sits there and kind of matures um until you do <laughs> yeah until until it's time until that time comes <laughs> around the corner <clears throat> man it's it's kind of a, a weird thought to think of of end of life right but it's it's a natural progression of what goes on naturally we uh you know i have i have two kids they're you know two teenagers and my goal in life is for them to bury me, not for me to bury them. But we just don't actually know what's going to happen in life. And we've just gone through COVID. Uh, in my family, we lost uh, three three family members who ended up passing away um, due to COVID-related issues. Uh, and you just wow. never know, man. You never know when things like that will happen. I thought for sure it was going to take grandma. Grandma's in her 90s. I thought for sure this is going to be her time. And nope, she's still going. Like, she's it's not her time. She's not ready to rock and roll yet. She's like, I'm not <laughs> leaving this too stubborn plane. to die, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so let me ask you, man. Uh, you've been on a couple podcasts so far. You've, you've been spreading the message. What kind of feedback are you getting from people as they start to learn about this even being an option? Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, like we're, you're talking about, it's like, wow, this is kind of cool. I don't have to go, you know, down this other road. And a lot of them are still in that uh, denial phase. You know, nobody in this country really wants to talk about death or accept that, you know, it's going to happen. But the truth is, 
you know, they say that everyone, two things are uh, definite in this, in this lifetime is death and taxes. Well, taxes is not definite. There's a lot of people in this world that are not going to pay taxes, but we're all going to pass away sometime. Now, if I don't make a decision about what's going to happen, then either my loved one or eventually maybe the county or the coroner or somebody is going to have to make that, that decision. But sooner or later, someone has to make a decision of what's going to happen to this body when I'm done with it. And know it, we came in in water, and now we can go out in water. And I think that's kind of cool. What's the what's the turnaround time? So, like, someone passes away, they make the decision um, that they're going to get acclimated. Like, you know, where does the body go? I mean, right now we talked about, you know, the facility that you're trying to set up here, but we can still provide the services. So what's that process like? Well, actually, the, the, the one facility that is functioning in California that I'm working with is, in, is kind of in your backyard in San Diego, North County. And um, so a cremation takes anywhere from about, oh, maybe three to five hours. Um, I, I hate to say, but, you know, if, if you're like the they'll do like they can do like 10 in a day. It's crazy. I mean, I, I can't even imagine being the person who has to like open this thing up and pour everything out when it's that hot. Yeah. But if it's already heated up, you put the next one in and it, you know, it goes quicker. Okay. But acclimation, um, you don't really have that um, situation. So you, it takes more like about six to eight hours essentially to do it because you've got to rinse the thing out. It cools down. You, you know, you fill this stuff back up. Um, it's a little bit more involved than, than doing cremation, but you know, it's, it's like, okay, uh, the person passes away. Uh, we get the body, we, we take it to, um, the facility and probably within a few days, um, it's processed and you've got to earn the material. And, you know, if maybe by the end of the, of that week or something, you want to have a, a memorial service, traditionally families usually take a couple weeks anyway, um, to kind of wrap their head around and get everybody together and, and do that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, it's very doable in, in whatever time frame. Uh, now, the one challenge I would say is the Muslims have this 24-hour rule. I don't fully understand that, not being Muslim, but I've talked to a few people about it. Um, and that's just nearly impossible to do in, you know, this huge uh, multiplex you know, city that we're in, that things can move that quickly. Um, but, you know, within a week, you could be having a service um, just like anywhere, anybody else. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, uh, all our cultural differences. I heard about that too, 24 hours to put the body in the ground, right? After someone passes away. Something like that. I don't fully like understand the it. whole thing. And it, 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 I don't know how you would do that um, in this day and age. Um, you know, unless you're in some small town or something where you can literally start digging it. And, you know, we have so many different rules and, and everything that has to go through uh, the county rules and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, they do the best they can, I guess. So let me ask you, you don't have to bury the ashes, right? So when you do cremation, there's no need to buy a plot of land. I mean, people do, exactly. for example, you know, like I know my, my mom had a, a spot for my brother when he passed away. We made them, buried some ashes. The kids got a little bit of the ashes in like jewelry pieces. Yeah, and, yeah the jewelry is kind of cool. Yeah, that's yeah a, they that's did a big all those part. different types of things. But you don't have to bury the ashes because I know for um, my wife's uncle, like they spread the ashes in the sea because he's he's a big time fisherman. I think he would have loved the aquamation. I mean, water people, oh, yeah. are water people Absolutely. all the way, right? Yeah. I just don't think they knew it was an option. No, you don't exactly. have to bury them, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, a few people do. I mean, that what you could do is say you get a plot um that would have been used for a casket but now you can get god not only your whole family but you know 10 generations in that same amount of space by the time you put all the urns in there uh, but what's really popular too is those mausoleums and columbariums uh where it's just a wall of um little marble doors i guess and you open it up and you you know you put the urn in and then the nice thing is you have a place to come and visit you know, and a lot of families, that is the thing about burial is they want to come and just see, OK, this is where dad is. And you can still do that in these other places, too. And then but with the amount of space, um, you know, you just keep adding family members, members to it. So. Man, well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, a whole new way to just uh, 
dispose of ourselves when we're dying when we die i mean let's face it you know we are here because there's a soul inside this body there's some consciousness here and as soon as that's gone i told my mom all the time if something happens to me you do what you want maybe she'll think aquamation is a, is a nice viable option i think it's pretty cool i still think the tree and turning me into an orange tree would be the best but i don't know if they even allow that but aquamation is definitely an option for you guys so one one more time john before we head out how can people get a hold of you if they want to find out more yeah, well, as you got got scrolling on the bottom here, um, agapeaquamation.com or uh, Agape Aquamation on Facebook. If you want to see a lot of other uh, stories and, and different things, uh, think about Desmond Tutu, how he got aquamated uh, beginning of last year. And that really kind of opened up a lot of doors. So either one of those, um, check it out and uh, hit me up. If you're uh, our aquam Agape Aquamation at gmail.com, that too. Perfect. Perfect. All right, John, I got a, a kind of a selfish question, man. Uh, we talked a little bit before the show and you were like kind of hesitant about talking death on the Business Bros podcast. So I got to ask you, man, you're going from podcast to podcast, uh, talking about this process, which is definitely something people just need to have as, as a, be aware that it's an option, basically. Um, and we took a 30 minute episode. We're going to chop it up and create social media pieces. So my question is, what was your experience like creating content with the Business Bros? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I, I love uh, seeing some of the stuff you guys do, and I would really love to find out more about it and see if you can help me come up with better ways to broach the subject. And since you've been in the life insurance uh, industry, um, I think you've got a feel for how to do that. And I am look forward to finding out about it. Sounds good, my brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, look, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your life. But when you start thinking about end of life planning, there are different options other than just burying you into the ground. Now, if that's your thing, by all means, go for it. But if you find yourself in a situation where you need another option and maybe a car wash or some fundraisers might not be uh, sufficient enough to bury somebody in the ground, you got other options. Aquamation is one of them. Make sure you guys check out the website, agapeaquamation.com, agapeaquamation.com. Check out what John's doing. I mean, it's different. It's nice. It's clean for the environment. It's less expensive than a lot of things. And let's face it, at the end of the day, you're gone, so you probably don't really care as much. But your family will enjoy having you around, at least in an urn or a place to, to go visit you. So one more time, agapeaquamation.com. John, thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. And we're out. It's over. Go home. Is your business in need of marketing? Try starting a podcast. But not just any podcast. Podcast like a pro. We can show you how to take your business from being invisible to becoming a brand people trust. Go to www.businessbros.biz 